Hey guys, this is the ring and pinion out of my Axial Yeti. I recently replaced the ring gear and the pinion gear with a set from Axial, their upgraded ring and pinion. And what I found is that the ring and pinion are too tight with each other. And so I'm going to have to do some shimming. And I thought this would be a good idea to kind of, good, good time to kind of talk about how the ring and pinion gets set up what the problems can be and um, just some easy shimming information so your ring and pinion gear are inside your differential the pinion gear is attached to this shaft the input shaft the ring gear is this larger gear here that actually connects to the differential gears inside which then connect to the axles and when you do an upgrade or even when you get it ready to run or build a kit you may find that the ring and pinion mesh, which is the interaction between the pinion gear there and the ring gear there, that that mesh might either be too tight or it might be too loose. In the case of this, I put it together and it's too tight. So I'll show you if I hold this together, because one thing you want to do when you're checking this is you want to make sure that you hold the differential together where it would be mounted, because this differential is only mounted until it goes in the truck with two screws, so you can pull this apart. Anyway. So you hold it together tightly, and if you if you can listen to this, hear that? That's that's a sound that they're way too tight. If you can hear and kind of feel that notchiness, that means it's way too tight. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart, and um, we'll talk about kind of the different adjustments you can make, the differences they make, and what's important from, from what I've seen and kind of what isn't when it comes to RC uh, ring and pinion setups. Let me get this apart. Right back. Okay, so here are the ring and pinion outside of the housing. This is the ring gear. This is the pinion gear. These are spiral bevel. Doesn't really make a lot of difference. Um, I think the spiral bevel is just kind of a marketing scheme. Um, it may make things a little bit stronger. It doesn't have the same offset pinion as a car axle does, so it doesn't have the advantage of that higher engagement, so I'm kind of dubious as to exactly how much advantage there is to having the spiral bevel. They might be a little bit quieter, but anyway, so what you've got is you have, when it's set up in the, in the differential, you have the ring gear coming in this way and the pinion gear coming in this way. The adjustments that you can make would be to move the ring gear probably depending on on your your act on your differential but you can move the the ring gear to the left or to the right a little bit and you can move the pinion gear usually in but not generally out and I'll show show you about that in just a minute um, both of those things serve the purpose of bringing these two gears further apart and closer together uh, moving the pinion gear also makes the mesh deeper or, or more shallow on an RC car especially like you know, a bash or that kind of thing I wouldn't worry too much about that on a real real vehicle that mesh and the way that it's set up is very very important for longevity and noise but in an RC car honestly the main thing that you need to be worried about is the the, the mesh but just between the gears in this kind of direction as they as they mesh together you don't want it to be too loose you can see here if I hold these way way far apart you can see there's a ton of slop in there you don't want that and you also don't want to be mashed together like that because that's not how gears are supposed to work they're not supposed to be in full mesh like that they're supposed to have just the tiniest bit of gap so that they slide past each other now there'll be some specification of this gap that specification is not known for these gears no one gives the specification so you kind of got to just guess I, I like to be able to feel the tiniest bit of play in the gears but um, not a ton of slop and then they don't want to like crunch against each other when you're turning them that's, that's way too tight so let's look at the housing and the way the let's look at the pinion gear first the way the pinion gear goes into the housing usually there's a bearing or two bearings and the pinion gear goes in like this and there's a shoulder here that will stop against this inner bearing. So if I put this in and I push it in, make sure whenever you're doing these kinds of setups that you push the bearing in all the way and that you push the pinion in all the way. You can get some weird results if the bearing isn't quite seated fully, so make sure you give that a good push. It'll push the pinion out and you can make feel like things aren't meshing properly when they really should be. 
So this goes in here and that seats against that bearing. So what you can do is you can put shims here to where the shims sit between the bearing and the pinion and it actually pushes the pinion inward. And what that'll do is it will push the pinion toward the ring gear this way and that will increase the mesh. What you usually can't do unless you made some major modifications is to take the pinion and move it out because it's already seating up against that bearing. That bearing is hard seated against the housing and there's really nothing you could do about it. I mean, you could take some material off of here and uh, that's kind of beyond the, uh, the scope of this discussion. So you can move the pinion in a little bit, but you really can't move it out. Generally speaking, unless there's some really strange uh, situation going on, I wouldn't worry about the pinion shimming it. The only other thing you can do in here is the drive shaft attaches here and you can put shims between the drive shaft and this outer bearing to stop the pinion from from wiggling in and out. I haven't really seen that to be a problem. I think when the gears are meshing, this is going to get pushed out and it's going to be just fine. I don't really bother with that. Maybe if you have a racing vehicle and you're, you're dealing with tenths of a second, um, it might make a difference. In this case, I don't think it does. Okay, so that's the pinion. The next thing you have some control over is the ring and the entire differential itself. This is where, in my opinion, the best adjustment for just general RC comes in. You can take this ring gear and you can move it this way a little bit back and forth. And the way you do that is by putting shims underneath these bearings on either side here. These are the shims that I'm actually going to be using today for this. Uh, I've got three different thicknesses and so what you would do is if you wanted to push the gear away from the pinion, say the gear is set up this way, pinions in here, if you want to push the gear away from the pinion you put a shim underneath the bearing on this side and what that'll do is when this gets pushed put in the housing the bearing will be further this way and the whole ring in, or the whole ring gear will get pushed over to the uh, the opposite side. You can see there's a little bit of slop in here. That slop's kind of what you have to work with. Some housings are going to be tighter than others but um, there usually will be some slop that you can play with and even if you're kind of jamming it in there you'll still have some play. So this ring and pinion is too tight so what I'm going to do is I'm actually in this case I have to completely disassemble the differential in order to get underneath that bearing. So I'm going to get underneath that bearing and I'm probably going to take, I've got three different thicknesses of shims. These shims come in all different shapes and sizes. Axial doesn't make a, a shim kit from what I've seen for this. This shim kit is um, just a, a general shim kit. There'll be different different vehicles that take these same size shims. This comes in three different thicknesses. Uh, I'm probably going to put the middle thickness, that's uh, two tenths of a millimeter under there. I'm going to rebuild it and then we'll see how that affects the the mesh between the two gears. Hopefully that'll fix it, but it may take some trial and error. And um, Let me go ahead and get that put in and we'll take a look and see how it is. Okay, so I've got the differential apart and here is the bearing that is going to be getting shimmed. If you're trying to loosen the mesh between the two gears, the pinion and the ring, you're going to want to put the shim between the bearing and the housing and the um, the differential housing itself on the opposite side that the ring gear is because you're wanting to push it away from the side that the, the ring gear is not on. So you'll put the shim between here and here and then put everything back together. If you were trying to tighten it this way you would put the shim under the opposite bearing it's important to put the shims inside the, the on the inside of the bearing and not on the outside just trying to save time because if you're trying to shim on the outside of the bearing and trying to cram the whole thing into the 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 carrier the housing like this it's a pain and a lot of times it doesn't work in this case I couldn't be done anyway because the shim is larger or the the hole in the shim is smaller than the axle cup. So when you're getting these shims you'll want the inside diameter of the shim to be the same diameter as the bearing 
and then it's important that the outside diameter of the shim is smaller than the outside diameter of the bearing because if you have a shim that's the same size as the bearing on the inside and the outside what's going to happen is when you put everything together it's going to squish down and it's going to seize up that bearing because the shim will be making contact on both the inside and the outside of the bearing. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together like I said the shim will go inside bearing will go on that way and then I'll go ahead and get it back in the housing and test it this may take two or three tries which is kind of a pain but that's the way it goes um, to get it right so let me get this back together okay differential is going back together the shim is underneath this bearing effectively pushing this entire unit this way which will take the ring gear and push it away from the pinion gear opening up that mesh it feels good right now feels very nice however it's not together yet and that's something that you gotta make sure of that you put these together and especially in some of these situations this is one of them two screws hold this differential together there are more things that squeeze it together when it's in the chassis so you need to make sure that you when you're testing this you hold things together tightly Otherwise, you're not going to get a really good feel on how things are, are meshing. I'm going to put these two screws in, and then we'll check the mesh. I can already tell that it feels like it's going to be on the snug side of where I like it. I've got a pretty big shim in there right now. I've got a, a 0.3 millimeter shim in there. And if I go any larger than that, I think I'm going to start running into other problems. So I may just have to be happy with it the way it is. And the reason that the there's all these differences is because there are tolerances in the manufacture of these housings primarily that move things around. And gear mesh is a pretty tricky thing. It's, it's pretty sensitive. So you may not get it perfect. The goal is just to get it good. Especially in like a bashing vehicle, it's just not that critical. Okay, let's see how this feels. Okay, so it's still a little notchy. Um, not too, too bad. I might just live with it. And that's another thing, these are brand new gears. They will bed in a little bit. Uh, it's way better than it was before. So, I might just call it good. Yeah, it's a little notchy, but I, I think I'm going to live with it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this installed look in the truck. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as setting up gears for, you know, just the general person. You just want to make sure that there's not a ton of slop in them. <clears throat> and you want to make sure that when you, when you rotate them, they don't feel, like, super crunchy. Like I said, I'm feeling a little bit of, of mesh crunch, a little bit of notchiness, I guess is what you would call it as I'm turning this, but it's way, way better than it was. And then these gears will seat in, and, and it'll get better um, with some use. Okay, well, uh, I hope this is helpful for somebody. And if you have any questions, let me know. And please subscribe, and um, we'll see you soon. Thanks, bye.